the current champion of the Ring of the Hulk. Whatever the f that means. If you want to get in the ring with me, get in the ring with me, and I'll make you do the job. I will knock your ass out with a f brick. Hit you in the dick. Make you go click. Wild Wild West. New chat. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it. All right, shove it squad. Ring of the Hawk is back after a short hiatus and the conclusion of season three. Ring of the Hawk is of course the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company to see if they're capable of doing the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. Season one saw Ronda Rousey and New Jack as joint champions. Season two, Brock Lesnar was the winner for his time in New Japan, available exclusively on Patreon. And season three ended with the Hardy Boys and their broken Hardy Boys gimmick in TNA. So it's a pretty tough competition to impress the Hawk, and I thought I'd kick off Season 4 with a video I've been wanting to make for a long time. And straight away I do break my 30 or less matches rule, but it's only just over and I think it should be a good video. Patreon requests for Ring of the Hawk are now back open. If you've sent me a message already, it's on the list, it's gonna happen. But they're back open and so are punches to the gut. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J.O.B., shove their name in the comments, Jack. Okay, it's Desmond Wolf. Let's watch someone go from brilliant to goof. Yes, this is Nigel McGuinness who was tearing it up in Ring of Honor for a number of years before debut for TNA in 2009 before the Hawk Hogan era had begun. This was actually pretty weird because he was supposed to be signed with the WWE but he failed a medical due to a bicep injury and the Fed didn't want him. He instead chose to sign with TNA who were a bit more relaxed about that sort of thing. He had a bold head, an angry face and was given the name Desmond Wolf. He immediately attacks Kurt Angle, which is a pretty high profile way to debut of a company. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Did you know that Wolf wrestled a random match for TNA in 2004? So that's where we've got to start today. Match 1, Gauntlet for the gold for the X Division title. He actually enters pretty late on into the match. He couldn't look any more mid-2000s if he tried. Big size advantage for Wolf. He takes out Jason Cross with an arm ringer and a key lock driver. His flurry doesn't last long as Psychosis enters and cutters him across the ropes and slingshots him with a leg drop. It continues going badly for him when he's smashed with a flatliner. Wolf just sort of exists in this match for a while, doing nothing. Well, he does get bitten by Shark Boy, which I'm sure is a real highlight for him. He's eliminated by a double drop kick from Amazing Red and Chris Saban. The match is won by Petey Williams. I like what I saw in his brief stay in this match, but he's clearly not an X Division guy. Seems like a strange fit for this match. It's a D. Wolf was supposed to stay in TNA as part of the World X Cup, but he chose to go to Japan instead. So we don't get to see Wolf on TNA screens until 2009 when he attacks Kurt Angle. If you think about it, TNA must have felt really strongly about Wolf from the get-go. They have him cut an in-ring promo straight away. He's confident and he's calling the crowd wankers. It's a huge spot for Wolf going straight into a feud with Perk Angle. Match 2, Street Fight. Kurt Angle vs Desmond Wolf. Angle rushes Wolf straight away with punches and uppercuts. Wolf pulls a comical expression to the camera. Wolf avoids the German suplex and knocks Angle away of his elbow. It's Wolf's turn to throw some uppercuts. It does seem a bit clunky here at times. Perhaps Wolf was getting used to working in the six-sided ring. Angle clotheslines him out of it. He should feel more confident out there. Angle sends him into the steps and tries to throw him into the ring, but Wolf isn't having any of it and he comes straight back at Angle. In the ring, Wolf's getting cocky and he slaps Angle who dumps in his singlet with anger. Wolf stops Angle's combat with a big-time arm ringer. Wolf tries to follow it up with some wacky clotheslines off the ropes, which doesn't work and he gets three Germans. Wolf no-sells them and he hits a big clothesline with authority. Good facial expressions from young Desmond Wolf here. That clothesline seems to have really rung Angle's clock. Desmond Wolf tells Angle he's going to end his career. That seems to just be the end of the match as Angle is stretched away. It wasn't really much of a match, but it did a lot to put over how much of a threat Wolf is. He's gone from a nobody to a guy who can potentially beat Kurt Angle in just two weeks, so that's good. Giving his proper debut a B. Looking forward to seeing more from him. Match 3. Desmond Wolf versus... For some reason, it's Hillbilly Cody Dina. He charges at Wolf straight away. Gets clotheslined down, and that's the three. What a pointless match. I'd like to see a bit more from a squash match. They've got Kurt Angle audio playing, trying to get over how dangerous Wolf's clothesline is. I'm not sure about that yet. It's hardly Bradshaw's clothesline from hell. Wolf redeems himself after the match with a good promo. He's calling Kurt Angle Mr. Mangle after crippling him in the previous match. So I guess this is a feud now. He's hungry like a wolf. Angle is doing this weird cough over and over again. It almost ruins the segment. But that's not Wolf's fault. The whole thing is a D. Match 4, Turning Point 2009. Desmond Wolf versus Kurt Angle. The deal here is that they're playing up that Wolf knows Angle, but Angle doesn't really know Wolf. 
Refreshing for a new talent to not get chance if you can't wrestle in this era. We start off with some chain wrestling with Wolf showing he certainly can wrestle. Wolf scores the first knockdown but then he runs into some hip tosses and arm drags. Lots of key locks in the early game which shows off the technical match we're about to see. They go hold for hold until Wolf kicks the ropes to take Angle down. Nice punch to the gut from Desmond Wolf, that's the sort of thing the Hawk can endorse. Kurt Angle manages a block in the corner, he starts throwing Wolf around with suplexes and backbreakers. Kurt starts doing shoulder thrusts until he gets overzealous and he hits into the ring pole. Wolf takes Angle down for leg sweep hammerlock. Big overhead suplex from Desmond Wolf now. Desmond Wolf slowly starts dissecting Kurt's left arm. I like how Wolf has so many different ways to hurt a man. Check out this bridging armbar. Kurt still has too much left in the tank though. Wolf tries to take it out of him with a running uppercut in the corner. He then tries a second one but runs into Kurt Angle's overhead belly to belly. Kurt does some clothesline to the running diving forearm. Not something you'd normally associate with Angle, he looked like a woman doing that. It's now time for Kurt Angle to hit the German suplexes. He throws Wolf with six with the crowd growing in anticipation with each one. Perk Angle frees the nipple now but he can't hit the ankle slam and he runs straight into Desmond Wolf's lariat. Just a two, so Wolf's finish is now dead. Instead, Wolf puts Angle on the top rope and he tries his other finish, the Tower of London, which Angle reverses and does an Angle slam for the two. Kurt tries to keep going, but Wolf floors him with a hammerlock takedown. Taz is super impressed with Wolf on commentary. He's usually laughing at the TNA wrestlers, but he ain't laughing now. Wolf rolls the ankle lock flawlessly into a figure four on Kurt's arm. Kurt also rolls for him and puts the ankle lock in again. Desmond frantically scratches at the ring and he tries to make the ropes. He eventually manages it. Kurt tries another angle slam this time, with Wolf turning it into a DDT for a double down. When they get up, Wolf nails the Tower of London, his finisher. Again, Kurt Angle kicks out, so now Wolf's other finisher's dead. Wolf wants another lariat, but instead Kurt Angle smashes him down. Angle tries a perk salt, which misses, and Wolf puts him straight into a key lock. Angle gets his foot on the rope. Wolf's getting desperate now, and he tries the Tower of London once again. Wolf double chops Angle in the throat and instead he seems to be trying a suplex. Angle smacks him away and there's the frog splash from Kurt Angle. No, it's just a two. Randomly, Kurt tries a tombstone pile driver now. Wolf reverses that and he also tries to do a pile driver, but Angle reverses that into an ankle lock. Kurt Angle suddenly changes his mind and gets a choke in. Wolf can't reverse that one and he has no choice but to tap out. Wow, great pay per view debut for Wolf. I do kind of get a bit of a nagging feeling that this harmed Wolf a bit too much. Neither of his finishers got the job done and he lost his pay-per-view debut, even if it was against Kurt Angle. Now all that being said, this was an excellent match. I'm giving it an A. Where does Wolf go from here then? Match 5, Impact Main Event Tag Match. Christopher Daniels and Desmond Wolf take on Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. Well, you can't say that Wolf isn't being treated like a big deal so far. Daniels will start this one out of Angle. Daniels gets in control of a dropkick and looks to tag Wolf. Wolf seems hesitant and Kurt tells him to just bring it. Wolf doesn't bring it, so AJ tags in. Daniels is also scared of AJ and he tags Wolf. They both exchange holds with neither man truly getting an advantage. That is until Wolf runs into a dropkick. Styles gives him a backbreaker and tags Angle. Kurt's dominating until Daniels takes a cheap shot of a kick from the apron. Wolf takes Angle down for rope kick and tags Daniels. He's not gone long and Wolf comes back with a big overhead throw for a two count. Angle tries to mount a comeback which Wolf stops throwing him down by his arm. Daniels then loses the advantage for the team and now Styles is in. AJ hits a nice backbreaker on Wolf. He looks for the Styles Clash which Wolf reverses but he can't hit his lariat and there's the Pele kick from Styles. AJ looks to dive but Daniel stops him and there's the Tower of London from Desmond Wolf. That's just a two so if Wolf's finisher wasn't dead before it sure is now. Angle runs at Wolf who dumps in his nappy of fear and runs away as Daniels tags him. Christopher Daniels hits the BME on AJ Styles for the free. Daniels can't believe that he's won it. A fun match which was too short. I think Wolf is losing credibility by the second with his weak ass finishes and running in fear from Angle. Give this guy a damn victory, he sure needs one. This one's a C for Wolf. Match 6, World Title Tournament First Round, Suicide vs Desmond Wolf. Wolf goes straight into the arm work and he throws Suicide overhead with a suplex. The uppercut in the corner gets Wolf for 2. A short arm shoulder block from Wolf now which isn't something you normally see. Suicide match to come back of a springboard back elbow. He hits the Green Bay plunge and a slingshot leg drop. This isn't looking good for Wolf. No, it's just a two. Suicide's next move is blocked in the corner and Wolf smacks him down to the mat. The Tower of London is reversed and Wolf runs into a running drop kick. Suicide takes too long and he's caught at the top. The Tower of London sort of connects for the free. Wolf even hesitated on the pin. He knew it looked bad, but I think it wasn't his fault. Not a great match and Wolf struggled to beat the masked man. It's a D. Match 7, later that same night, World Title Tournament quarterfinal. 
Desmond Wolf versus the boss, Bobby Lashley or Crystal. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this one. Lashley puts him in a full Nelson straight away and Wolf desperately makes the ropes. They both trade arm bars. Again, Wolf is losing. Bobby Lashley throws him to the mat time and time again, controlling Desmond Wolf. Wolf eventually elbows Lashley in the head to get some sort of advantage. He puts a nice submission on Lashley, but the boss has too much power for him and he turns it into a hammerlock with strikes. Lashley tries to take a breather on the ropes, which is a bad decision as Wolf kicks the ropes. Wolf can't hit his uppercut in the corner and Lashley spears him. Big time gut buster from Lashley on the Wolf. It's quickly followed by a full Nelson slam, just a two for Lashley. Wolf manages to slow Lashley down by throwing him by his arm. Wolf wants the Tower of London, which doesn't work as Lashley puts him in a dragon sleeper. Desmond gets a rope break and punches Lashley in the gut and cutters him across the ropes. Desmond applies a nice key lock on the ropes as Wolf screams into the camera, this is you, Kurt Angle. The ref DQs him. It felt like the ref didn't give him very long to get that hold off. Well, guess if you're going to have Wolf lose, this is how you do it. Wolf didn't look out of place with Lashley. Guess Wolf is still feuding with Kurt Angle too. I enjoyed this one, it's a B from the Hawk. Match 8, World Heavyweight Title Match. AJ Styles the champion versus Desmond Wolf, who apparently paid his way into this match. Oh, so he's also a rich man as part of his gimmick. I guess ROH paid him well then. Angle's on commentary for this one. Wolf just can't connect with anything and he runs into a dropkick. AJ finally misses an attack in the corner and Wolf takes him down with a hammerlock. Wolf also throws AJ overhead. That's about all he manages before Stars comes back with a big time backbreaker and a springboard forearm. Weird moment now as AJ and Wolf smash into each other. They play it off as Wolf kicked him in the nutsack, but I'm not too sure. Wolf smiles with happiness. Christopher Daniels runs out to the ring and that's enough to roll Desmond Wolf up with a distraction for the free. Apparently Daniels wants to be the only person who beats AJ Styles. Man, Wolf's star is fading faster than a punch to the gut. And this match was just bad. It's an S. Who would have thought it? Match 9, Christopher Daniels versus Desmond Wolf. So it's heel versus heel here. The crowd chant, fallen wanker. Wolf keeps trying cravats and Daniels is having a bad time. Even when Daniels slams him, the grip is maintained. Wolf throws him with a snap mirror, so I guess the only way Daniels was getting free was when Wolf chose to free him. Wolf goes back to a cravat again, but this time it doesn't work, and he's putting a side headlock into Wolf rolls away. Headlock takeover from Daniels now, I guess we're only getting two moves in this match. No, I guess not, Daniels shoulder blocks him down and flips him off. Nice move now as Daniels has an armbar on, Wolf tries to roll away, but CD catches him in a pin for a two. As soon as they get up, Wolf uppercuts him with Daniels firing straight back. They go nose to nose now as they argue over who has less hair. Daniels wins that argument with a leg lariat. Big backbreaker from Wolf now, followed by a running STO. Come on Wolf, do something, you should have the power advantage. No, it's Daniels with a two count on a split legged moonsault. Out of nowhere, Wolf hits the flying hammerlock takedown for a two count. No one's staying down long here, Daniels hits a jawbreaker and into an enziguri. Angel's wings is attempted, which Wolf fights off when he keeps rolling Daniels around with a figure four on his arm. Now Wolf adds a cross face into the mix. Daniels bites him off and does a headstand. It's now Daniel's turn to trap Wolf in a submission. Wolf rolls him into a two count pin to get him off. Lots of reversals now, I'm starting to enjoy this one. Wolf smacks Daniels down in the corner, he seems to have the advantage. Now pins are exchanged, there's like eight of them, it's really cool. As they keep reversing small packages, the bell starts ringing. Apparently the 10 minute time limit has expired. The crowd chant, let them fight, but they don't. Really nice match, it's an A from the Hawk. And little point of note there, they never have these two face off again in a singles match. What idiots. Match 10, Final Resolution 2009, 3 Degrees of Pain, aka a 2 out of 3 falls match. This is probably Desmond Wolf's most famous match, and he of course takes on Kurt Angle. The first fall will be a straight up singles match. You wouldn't know it though, because they're working the submissions all the time. They keep reversing each other here, I think we're in for a technical masterpiece. Nice headlock takedown from Wolf, the crowd is surprisingly split in this match. Angle just can't get out of it. It lasts for a bit before out of nowhere Angle bombs Wolf into the side of the cage. Wolf immediately responds by snapping Angle down by his arm. Angle tries to retaliate with the Angle Slam which Wolf reverses into a hammerlock takedown for a double down. When they get up Angle hits German suplexes, 5 to be exact. Angle starts to transform into Perk Angle and climbs up the cage. But Wolf's able to stop him and hit the Tower of London. Angle kicks out and he goes one step further almost winning with a roll up. Really nice reverses in the corner now from a second Tower of London attempt. And there's the Angle Slam, no just a two. Angle climbs but he only climbs the top rope and he misses the perk salt. Another Tower of London connects, surely that's it. Yeah Desmond Wolf wins the first fall. 
The next fall will be a submission round. Wolf starts folding Kurt up like an accordion, but Angle suddenly rolls out of it and flawlessly into a figure four. Eventually, Wolf gets a rope break. We seem to have Kurt Angle working the leg and Wolf working the arm. Once again, Taz is just in awe of everything that Desmond Wolf is doing. Kurt gets the ankle lock on and Wolf comes close to tapping until he gets a Kimura back on Kurt, which causes Kurt to have to break the hold. Tanae starts comparing this match to MMA. They just keep exchanging holds over and over. They're equally matched. Taz almost reaches the point of climax at a triangle leg choke. Kurt starts to turn red until he escapes. Angle just won't give up his ankle lock attempts and he finally forces Wolf to tap out. The third and final fall is escape the cage. If they could even walk at this point that is. Taz starts running down an indie show on commentary. There's an awkward silence. Kurt throws Wolf into the cage a couple of times. That doesn't hurt him and he stops Kurt from climbing and hits a middle rope suplex. Taz is saying that Wolf is going to be the man in the wrestling world. Desmond Wolf starts climbing but his legs slow him down. Kurt stops him and climbs up with him. There's the overhead belly to belly. Kurt steals a page from Desmond Wolf now of a clothesline. He follows it with a frog splash which Wolf tries to block with his leg. Both men scream with pain and stay down for a while. It looked pretty legit. Uh, the referee opens the door for Wolf to start crawling out. Why do they always have to add this aspect to cage matches? It's the aspect that nobody likes. Wolf makes it as far as the steps when Angle hooks his foot and puts on the ankle lock. Angle eventually lets go, but Kurt is now fully evolving. He climbs to the top of the cage. Wolf also moves towards the door, but Angle drops down first and just about wins the match. Great match, however, I don't think it's quite as good as people say. It was just missing something. Still getting an A though. Now, whilst that was excellent, we're now going into the Hulk Hogan era of TNA, so let's see if anything gets better or worse for Wolf. Match 11 Desmond Wolf versus the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. They try to have a technical masterpiece match in just two minutes, it just isn't working. They're both moving 100 miles an hour as Wolf does hammerlocks. I really like the way that Pope keeps his arm in the hammerlock position even when Wolf is nowhere near him. Wolf misses the uppercut in the corner and Pope drops him and hits a falling handstand elbow. Wolf cuts him off with a hammerlock. He tries the Tower of London which doesn't connect. Pope's strike doesn't connect either but Pope gives him a small package and that's over. Wow, how the mighty have fallen. He's gone from a 5 star match of Angle to losing to the Pope in just 2 minutes. It certainly feels like someone didn't like Wolf backstage. Now that being said, Wolf did a lot in 2 minutes, so it's a D. But don't worry because there's a guy on the roster who's liked even less by TNA management. Match 12, Desmond Wolf. Pope's on commentary, apparently they're having a match on pay-per-view now, even though the Pope beat him with ease on impact. It just doesn't make sense. Anyway, Wolf is taking on Samoan Joe. He looks really pissed off, which wouldn't be uncommon for Joe in TNA around this time. Joe strikes Wolf in the gut with fury as he collapses in the corner. In the opposite corner, Joe hits a big elbow and a kick. Wolf tries to make a comeback, but he's hit for snap slam by Joe. Wolf manages to fight off the rear naked choke, but his uppercut in the corner is blocked, and there's a urinaki from Samoan Joe. Joe starts ducking and weaving like a boxer. Nice move now as Wolf turns another urinaki into a headlock takeover. Joe falls face first on the mat to the hammerlock. Desmond Wolf does manage to connect the uppercut now, but he doesn't know what else to do. Joe makes the bizarre decision to climb to the top rope. Wolf stops him and tries the Tower of London. That's blocked by Joe at the rear naked choke, but Wolf is determined and he hits the Tower of London anyway. And that's the three. Samoan Joe has lost in three minutes. At least it's a win for Wolf. After the match, Wolf says, if I can beat Samoan Joe, think what I can do to you, Pope. Not a lot from the looks of it based on his two minute loss last time. This one's a D or something. There really wasn't anything impressive here. Match 13, Genesis 2010. Desmond Wolf, who now has a new manager called Chelsea versus the Pope. Hopefully Wolf won't lose in two minutes this time. Wolf's entrance music goes on forever as he has his trousers ripped open. It's actually kind of awkward. Pope definitely has the better of Wolf in the early going. Wolf suddenly puts the brakes on in the corner and does a handstand in the corner into double boots to the Pope. Wolf smiles with happiness. Pope tries to do something similar in the opposite corner. That doesn't work and he gets thrown out of the ring. But Pope seemingly isn't hurt from that and he puts Wolf in a Boston Crab across the ropes. He follows out of a second rate fist drop for a two count. Pope pimp slaps Wolf now who collapses on the ropes. Pope looks confused. I think he wanted to hit him again. Pope keeps going and flies across the back of Wolf and out of the ring. Back in the ring now, Wolf does a snap mirror into the ropes. It's so good that he does it again. He applies the single leg Boston with Pope making the ropes. Wolf keeps the targeting of the leg going which Taz screams in pain at watching. Now it's a sort of bridging deathlock. 
The submissions go on for a while. Considering Wolf likes his submissions so much, he hasn't made a single person tap out. Nice STF from Wolf now. These submissions are flawless. Taz calls Wolf exceptional. Pope seems like it's almost game over for him. Wolf drop kicks Pope's leg in the corner now. I haven't seen many matches in my career of such a single targeting of a single body part, but Wolf is keeping it interesting for all his different holds. Pope tries to come back, but Wolf says shut up or I'll smack you one. Desmond Wolf looks for the Tower of London, which doesn't work, and then Wolf goes running straight into an STO. Really nice overhead spike suplex from the Pope now, but just a two. Desmond Wolf gets back on top of another smackdown. Today and Taz are just going nuts about how innovative this match is as Wolf wraps Pope's leg around the ring pole. Unfortunately, Wolf gets distracted arguing with the ref and Pope hits him with a spine buster. Again, the Pope is on the verge of a comeback when Wolf crushes him with a hammerlock takedown. Wolf wants to put on a figure four now, but he's almost caught out of a small package. Yet again, Wolf almost gets caught out. I'm enjoying this match. Desmond Wolf misses an attack in the corner and Pope spins him around and hits a net breaker off the ropes for a two. Wolf makes a bigger mistake now and tries another handstand in the corner, but we've already seen that and so has the Pope who collects him from the corner and hits a power bomb for his 4th or 5th two count. Pope then tries his D'Angelo De Niro Express in the corner, but he can't run and Wolf charges it him with a clothesline. And holy crap, that is the three. Wow, I can't believe he won and it was a brilliant match too. This is what I like to call a sleeper match. It's a great match that no one ever talks about and most people don't even realise it even exists. So many unique and clever submission holds and eventually his working of the leg led to a victory for Wolf. It's an A from the Hawk. Match 14, Desmond Wolf with Chelsea versus Val Venus. I love how they show the ladies in the crowd who no longer look impressed by Val Venus. Val Venus looks more like Gene Snitsky here. Moy smacks Wolf down time and time again to booze. Fortunately, Wolf shuts him down for hammerlock takedown. The crowd are fully behind Wolf. Wolf does a bridging submission as the crowd chant tap, but he doesn't. Wolf once again takes him down by his arm, but all that seems to do is wake Val Venus up who nails a net breaker for a one count. The full Nelson slam now, but Venus doesn't make a cover. Instead, he looks for the money shot, which Wolf is able to cut off. There's the Tower of London, and an extremely rare moment now. Wolf actually gets the free from the Tower of London. Look, you'd never ever possibly want to watch this match again, but the crowd are getting louder and louder for Wolf. It's a D. Match 15, Desmond Wolf and Hernandez versus Mr. Anderson and Kurt Angle. They are tag team partners who don't get on. Wolf doesn't start, which is probably a good thing because his win-loss record against Kurt Angle is terrible. Wolf takes a cheap shot on Angle and tags himself in. He throws Angle down time and time again by wrist lock takedowns. Angle keeps powering up, but Wolf won't break the hold. Angle eventually gets him off and throws Wolf with a German suplex. Wolf dumps in his nappy of fear and tags Hernandez. Later, Wolf gets back in when he thinks he has an advantage, but it doesn't last long. Wolf and Angle exchange arm bars and ankle locks. Wolf taps out, but the ref is distracted, and Angle crashes into the turnbuckle. Desmond, Wolf, and Hernandez continue to struggle, although this is pretty much a handicap match. Angle hits Wolf with an overhead belly to belly. Kurt then gets distracted by Hernandez, and he turns around into a hammerlock, but he kicks out at two. Wolf can't connect with the Tower of London as Angle hits the Angle Slam. Mr. Anderson tags in and attacks his own partner. Anderson gets the free on Desmond Wolf, who was down for about 15 seconds from that angle slam. I guess Perk Angle is super effective against Desmond Wolf. This wasn't much, and Wolf looked like a weak link. It's a D. Match 16 against All Odds 2010, World Title Tournament quarterfinal match. Desmond Wolf with Chelsea versus the Pope. Again. Well, I guess this one is the best out of three. And if this one's anything like the last one, I'll be a happy hawk. We start out with another new cool submission move from Wolf, but Pope reverses it quickly and puts on a hold of his own. Wolf makes it back to his feet and switches the submission around again. Pope throws him away, but we're at a standoff here. Pope starts to get control of the match when Wolf throws him out of the ring. Another cool move now where Wolf snaps the rope back into Pope's face. I'm impressed with the amount of clever things Wolf does. As Pope comes back into the ring, Wolf does a reverse leg sweep to take the Pope down again. It seems like Wolf is starting to zone in on the Pope's shoulder. Instead of a submission, we get a vicious DDT from Desmond Wolf now for a two count. Now a more familiar move with Wolf doing the cravat. It doesn't work and Pope is all go now. Pope hits the pimp slap and the coronation, shades of King Charles III. Pope comes back into the ring of a crossbody for a two count. The Pope wants another dive, which is stopped and Wolf meets him up there. Big time superplex from Wolf. Desmond Wolf misses the lariat and gets rolled up against the ropes for a two. Desmond quickly shuts the Pope down again, but it's not working like their last match. Pope hits the net breaker off the ropes and there it is, the D'Angelo De Niro Express for the free count. Nah, just not as good as their last match. It was fine, but it just didn't tell a story and this wasn't as much fun to watch. It's a C from the Hawk. 
Match 17, Desmond Wolf for Chelsea versus the Idiot Abyss. Just not good. It only goes one minute. Just skip this one if you're looking to complete a Desmond Wolf corner of matches. It's not essential viewing. Wolf loses in one minute to the Black Hole Slam and looks stupid doing it. Shove it. Match 18, World Heavyweight Title Fatal 4-Way. Desmond Wolf with Chelsea versus the Pope versus the Idiot Abyss versus the champion AJ Styles with Ric Flair. Pope doesn't start the match, which doesn't surprise the Hawk in the slightest. AJ Styles is scared of Abyss and he tags Wolf. Wolf headbutts Abyss in the gut and Sunset flips him, but he can't pull Abyss over, who ass drops him. Abyss has the power of Hulkamania behind him. He tries to double choke slam Wolf and Styles, but he can't manage it, but he can manage the double clothesline. Wolf is also hit of a big side slam for a two. We go to an advert break and Wolf just sort of disappears, no idea where he went. AJ Styles wins with a figure four on the Pope. There's just nothing positive I can say about this match. Wolf seems to be slowly aligning himself with Flair and Styles, so at least there's some storyline progression. Still a real lump of a match though. Match 19, tag match. Mr. Anderson, Desmond Wolf for Chelsea versus the Pope and Kurt Angle. Well, not much variation in opponents for Desmond Wolf, is there? Wolf and Angle's feud feels like it was a long time ago. Angle is wrenching on Wolf's arm and Anderson is refusing to tag his partner in. Angle hits Wolf with a big time hip toss now. The Anderson cheap shot turns the tide for our team and Anderson is happy to tag in now. It trundles along for a bit, but it's just not going well. It feels like the tide has returned and Wolf is now a weak link. Pope gets the tag and he backdrops Wolf. Despite being on one leg, the Pope sweeps out Wolf with an STO for a two count. Kurt Angle takes out Anderson with an angle slam and Wolf hits the hammerlock takedown on Angle. Desmond Wolf looks for a figure four on the Pope, but instead he gets rolled into a pin for the three. Wolf is also a bad loser. Barely managed to move. Yes, this one's going in the zone. Match 20. Desmond Wolf with Chelsea versus the Pope. You know how to kill off intrigue for a wrestler. Have them constantly face each other and look bad in two minute matches. Except now Wolf is having problems with his manager. Nothing happens until Wolf's manager distracts both the referee and the Pope. When Pope turns around, Wolf smacks him one with some brass knuckles. That's the three. Just not good. I don't care that he won. It's an S. Match 21. Oh, you have to be kidding the Hawk. Someone smacked me in the gut because I must be seeing things. Why? Why is the Pope facing Wolf again? Wolf doesn't even get an entrance, by the way. They meet on the ramp. I've seen this match so much that my brain's getting cramped. At this rate, Wolf will never be the champ. Pope beats him in just two minutes with a double knee stamp. This runs full of mould like damp. Wolf is no longer a lovely little scamp. Match 22. Anything but the Pope. Anything but the Pope. Please, please, please. Garrett Bischoff. No, I'm kidding you. It's lethal lockdown. 20. Desmond Wolf is in Team Ric Flair as they battle Team Hogan in a cage. It's good versus evil and they must battle for control of TNA because they always do. Wolf throws no job Rob into the cage. Not a lot's happening in all honesty until a wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Slappy crushes Wolf into the cage. He also slams his meathead into Rude's meathead and stereo cage throws. Wolf has become obsessed with trying to take Abyss's Hall of Fame ring, which actually belongs to his big brother, the Hulkster. Wolf might as well not exist in this match. He does nothing of note. Actually, I lied because the end of the match is Abyss giving him the black hole slam. It's an S. Match 23, eight man tag gauntlet. The Icon, Sting and Slapnut start this one. When Wolf enters, he desperately tries to hurt Slapnuts and he hits an uppercut in the corner. Jarrett blocks the Tower of London and squashes Wolf against the ropes. Wolf is persistent though and tries it again. Once again, Jarrett blocks it and suplexes Wolf. Rob the Roider is here now. Wolf is scared of Rob the Roider. I was wondering how this run could possibly get worse. Now I know. Terry smashes Wolf all around the ring. Big front slam by the Roider on the Wolfer. Now it's a big power slam. Rob doesn't make a pin because, I don't know, he stares around the room for 20 seconds. We come back from an advert break and Wolf is no longer the legal man. Samoan Joe returns after a spell away doing nothing and he two bone suplexes Wolf. Seconds later, Samoa Joe pins Robert Roode with a muscle buster. I'm pretty certain for sure this time that Wolf didn't manage a single move. Honestly, can't see where the next grade that doesn't shove it is coming from. Well, it seems like the fans of 2010 felt the same way as the Hawk too, because there was a fan vote to decide the new number one contender for the heavyweight title. Everyone voted Wolf, who won the competition, much to Hogan and Bischoff's dismay, and they were forced to give him a title shot. Match 24, world heavyweight title, the challenger Desmond Wolf, who doesn't get an entrance versus the champion, no job Rob. Fans choice special, apparently. Wolf smashes Rob off the ring apron. The ref is a dick and decides to ring the bell. Wolf desperately tries to pick Rob apart in the corner, but nobody's buying it at this point, it's far too late. 
Wolf connects with a bad hammerlock takedown for a two count. Desmond Wolf's an idiot and he goes running whilst Rob's long gone. He flies off the top and kicks Wolf. The rolling thunder from Rob Van Dam connects. Wolf stops his next dive and tries to tower of London. Then he decides to try it on the outside of the ring. Rob fights it off and springboard back kicks him. Then Wolf gets back body dropped into the ring and Rob wins it with a frog splash. Just as we expected, a three minute burial, it's an S. Match 25, Sacrifice 2010. Chelsea on a pole match. Wolf with Chelsea versus Abyss who jumps him on the ramp. I'm kidding about the pole match by the way. But if Wolf wins, he does get Hulk Hogan's Hall of Fame ring. And if Abyss wins, he gets Chelsea. And if no one wins, we're all happy. Leading up to that match, it's been insinuated that Abyss has been forcing himself onto Chelsea against her will. We make it into the ring and the bell rings. Wolf tries a crossbody, but he bounces off Abyss. The match turns on the outside now, but it's incredibly slow. I'm almost falling asleep here. Wolf slowly works a key lock. I can't understand why the mass of Abyss doesn't just slop Wolf down. The crowd are split, which is proof that the abyss mania gimmick isn't working. Abyss connects with a big boot to the chest as Wolf flies off the ropes. That doesn't keep Wolf down long, who gets a hammerlock DDT for a two. You can probably all sense it, and I'm sorry, but I just can't get excited for this match. Or, to be honest, anything Wolf does at this point, which is a damn shame. Abyss blocks the clothesline from Wolf and choke slams him. Chelsea causes a distraction which allows Wolf to land a shot with the brass knuckles. No, it's just a two. Wolf is an idiot and he loses. Literally nothing to like about this match. These two have horrible chemistry, it's an S. Match 26, Desmond Wolf, who is now apparently the seventh highest ranked heavyweight versus Jeffrey Nero Hardy. Wolf and Hardy seem to be determined to out-wrestle each other. Wolf makes a mistake and Hardy leg drops him for a two count. Wolf responds with a smack in the corner. Once again, Kurt Angle is on commentary to remind us of when Desmond Wolf was relevant. Jeff starts throwing kicks and Wolf has to bail from the ring. He's not safe out there though when Hardy smashes down on top of him. Wacky short arm clothesline from Hardy in the ring now. Finally, Wolf manages a move as he turns to twist the fate into an arm ringer for a two count. The Tower of London doesn't work though because it never does. Wolf does manage to hit the uppercut in the corner and that sets up Hardy for a hamlock DDT for a two count. The Hardy comes back in with a head scissors and the whisper in the wind, but there's a ref bump. Jeff hits the twist of fate on Wolf anyway, but no ref. Wolf gets some balls in a bag and smacks Jeff Hardy in the head. He makes the cover and wow, Desmond Wolf actually beats Jeff Hardy. I'm shocked. He still barely managed a thing, but it was a well-wrestled match and he got such a big win that it's a C. And we never saw this bag of balls ever again. <laughs> Why did they give it to him? Match 27, eight-man tag. AJ Styles, Beer Muddy and Desmond Wolf versus Jay Lethal, Mr. Anderson, Jeff Hardy and Abyss with Chelsea. Yet another pointless match where Desmond Wolf is the most minor character of them all. We finally get to see Wolf five minutes into the match. He's suplexed by Jeff Hardy and he has to tag out. Wolf does get back in later, but all he can manage is throwing Jeff Hardy into his partner's boots. Then he almost loses his team's advantage when they have Jeff Hardy nicely isolated. I didn't see Wolf again until near the end of the match as the match broke down and everyone started hitting moves. Wolf DDT'd lethal, but then he got a Green Bay plunge from Anderson. Surprisingly, he actually managed to return and clothesline the idiot Abyss down who was wallowing around like a beached whale. He screams at his former manager to give him a chair. He's feuding with Abyss over who owns Chelsea. Wolf snatches the chair from Chelsea and is promptly punched back at him by Abyss. More surprisingly, Wolf doesn't take the pin here because Jay Lethal does after the Styles Clash. Nothing to like here at all. Match 28, tag match. Desmond Wolf and Orlando Jordan with a... Uh, whatever that is. Versus Abyss with Chelsea and Robert the Roider Terry. Wolf starts with Abyss, unfortunately. Abyss has a bad arm, which Wolf sliced open with a bottle. Desmond does pretty much nothing and tags OJ in. Chelsea slaps OJ on the outside, which causes them all to argue over who's bisexual. Abyss sneaks up and smacks Wolf one. Everyone looks a mixture of confused and not caring. Wolf and Abyss brawl away. Hopefully they're gone for good. They are. Rob Terry wins with the Roid Rage Express. It's an S. Match 29, Slammiversary 2010 Monsters Ball. Desmond Wolf with Chelsea versus the Monster Abyss. Wolf immediately swings a cane at Abyss, but I'm pretty sure it hit the referee. Abyss boots him square in the head and fetches a chair. Wolf kicks it back at him and wedges it in the corner. Wolf doesn't stay in control long as his float over his court and he's side slammed. A barbed wire board is in the ring now. It's not used yet though as Wolf smashes into the chair in the corner. Abyss disappears to get a trash can which leaves it open for Wolf to kick the rope to take advantage of a trash can shot to the head. For some reason there is a teddy bear wrapped in barbed wire. This seems to really confuse Desmond Wolf. In fact it confused me. Abyss squashes the bear into Wolf. Then Abyss goes into full idiot mode as he's infatuated with Chelsea and he hands her the bear. 
Oh no, not the dumb tax. No, it's actually broken glass. Abyss points at Wolf with the Hulk Hogan. You! Wolf dumps his Napier Fear and runs away. Desmond Wolf uses Chelsea as a human shield and hits the monster with a kendo stick. He tries to cane Abyss off the stage, but he wakes up and chokeslams Wolf on top of a cardboard ramp. Abyss gets him back to the ring for a two count. This might be the slowest match I've ever seen. After a few minutes, Desmond Wolf manages a sunset flip powerbomb on Abyss on the barbed wire board. Somehow just a two. Abyss retaliates with a shock treatment backbreaker for a two. There's now a desperate fight over who's going into the glass pile. Turns out it's Abyss after Wolf hits him in the head with a stick. Yet again it's a two. Wolf is arguing with his manager again because he wants brass knuckles. She throws them to Abyss who smacks Wolf and hits the black hole slam for the three. <sighs> I'm disappointed with this one. It was so slow and Wolf didn't do anything impressive. And I don't think it's due to his blood problems because why would they put him in a match with glass and barbed wire if they were aware of Wolf's problems at this point? It's a D, Wolf is not a hardcore wrestler. Match 30, Desmond Wolf, who's still a Chelsea for some reason versus Jay Lethal. Wolf attacks him before the bell. Wolf's too distracted by Chelsea once again. In the ring, Wolf does a hammerlock takedown. It feels like a while since we've seen that one. Wolf is distracted again and Lethal starts his comeback. Desmond Wolf quickly shuts him down. Chelsea screams, screw you Wolf, I'm going home, but she falls over. Wolf follows her and yells at her on the ramp as Jay Lethal follows him and launches Wolf back into the ring. Nice handspring back elbow from Lethal, and then wow, Lethal wins in two minutes when he throws Desmond Wolf into a netbreaker. Because of this loss, Wolf is not allowed to join Ric Flair's fortune faction, so basically everyone thinks Wolf sucks, including the Hawk now. Match 31, Desmond Wolf, who's still with Chelsea for some completely ridiculous reason, versus Kurt Angle. Previously, this would have been regarded as a big match, but not anymore. Wolf is a loser who no longer gets an entrance. Also, Wolf is apparently now ranked at number 9 in case you were keeping track. It's good to see Wolf finally having an actual wrestling match with some time dedicated to it. We start with some hammerlock counters. Wolf eventually kicks the ropes to take Angle down. Wolf is distracted again, he runs into a hip toss. Kurt Angle dodges the uppercut, but Wolf also does the spear and Angle hits the post. Wow, an overhead suplex of Wolf. It's been so long since we've seen something like that. The big arm ring a takedown follows that. It's already the best match in ages. Wolf counters the sunset flip by slamming Angle's arm into the mat and he applies the armbar. Oh no, Wolf is arguing with Chelsea again. Great. Kurt looks really cold as he starts his comeback. Yeah, I know he's selling his arm, but he looks cold. Kurt starts throwing Wolf with frozen suplexes. Kurt can't get the free yet. Wolf manages to avoid the Angle slam and drives Kurt down with a hammerlock for a two of his own. Why is he shocked that that didn't get him the win? That move hasn't beaten anyone this entire video. What a moron. Kurt counters the Tower of London into the angle slam. The Great Vine Ankle Lock makes Wolf tap out in 7 minutes. No way near as good as their previous encounters, but by far the best match in ages. It's a C. So I guess Wolf's number 10 now. He'd make more sense as a number 2. Match 32 is for some reason a submission match between Desmond Wolf, who is still for some godforsaken reason with Chelsea, against Brian Kendrick. Has there ever been a more random match in the history of wrestling? Although surely Wolf's winning this one. He is a submission specialist after all. Well, he hasn't actually beaten anyone by tap out, but come on, it's Brian Kendrick. Kendrick is like a vicious pit bull. Wolf desperately tries to get some space, but he can't. He's drop kicked down and Kendrick puts on the first submission. Once again, Wolf is more distracted arguing with Chelsea. It's weird because Wolf's in the best shape of his career at this point in the video. Kendrick double legs Wolf and tries to smack him, but it's not good enough. Desmond Wolf finally puts on a submission which Kendrick quickly kips out of. Chelsea leaves because she always does. For some reason this shocks Wolf. Kendrick applies the Cobra Clutch and Wolf taps out. Simply horrendous and nonsensical. Into the shove its own it goes. Match 33, final match. Triple threat. Desmond Wolf with Chelsea. I guess he's with her until the end. Versus the Welsh Broider Rob Terry. Wow, what a final match to have. Well, Samoa and Joe's are there too, but imagine Rob Terry being part of your final match. Wolf is scared of both of his opponents. Terry and Joe take turns boxing Wolf and Joe kicks him. In his final match, Desmond Wolf does manage to take Joe down by his arm. He also hits Rob Terry, which is something I've always dreamed of doing. Samoa and Joe returns, but Wolf quickly gets rid of him again. Joe struggles to even make it back into the ring. Terry takes Wolf down with, I don't know, a cut wrench throw. Wow, huge big back body drop by the Welsh Royder now with Wolf's legs smashing into the ropes. Terry also hits Wolf with a chemical combination. Samoan Joe returns and makes Wolf tap out with the Coquita clutch. Well, at least Wolf didn't lose to the Royder, but it's still an S though. 
Now Wolf's TNA career wasn't immediately over as he teamed up with fellow Englishman Magnus, and Chelsea is still with them for some reason. They called the team London Brawling, but they never actually had a match on the main show. They were scheduled to face the Machine Guns at No Surrender 2010, but the match was pulled. It was revealed in 2014 by Wolf himself that he had Hep B, which explained his absence. But as fans, we had no idea what was going on at the time. Wolf was released by TNA in June 2011. In 2016, Wolf finally made it into the WWE, but as a commentator, Nigel McGuinness. Wow, what a run of missed opportunities that was, but we've got to grade what was in front of us and not let emotion get in our way, and also what we know about his medical problems now. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, so is a punch to the gut. A lot's been said about the medical problems, but in this Hawks opinion, it wasn't the only thing holding him back. Someone did not like him in management because he was de-pushed way before any medical conditions could have come to light. Anyway, we've got to shove Desmond Wolf final grade for his TNA run. So forget about how much of a good wrestler Nigel was in ROH, it's not about that. His TNA run started out pretty good and then went downhill on a match by match basis. I honestly expected to give this a B, but I don't think it was even as good as that unfortunately. There just wasn't enough here. I think a C is fair for our first competitor on season 4. I'd still have him to do the J.O.B, but probably not in hardcore matches, it certainly wasn't his strong suit. And if you don't agree with that, I'll rob you for your loot. 